So I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I have one major superpower in this world and it literally is making salads. And I ask any of my friends, in fact, any of my friends listening to this right now, put in the comments. If, if, if all my friends are like, oh, you're coming from di for dinner? Let's make a salad. So, and when I make a salad, uh, yeah, I think about taste, but I think about health as well. So on this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a salad that heals your body and what do we all want to get rid of? Belly fat. So I want to show you how you put together a salad that helps you burn belly fat and keeps you healthy. Deal? And those of you that are like, well, I don't really like salads. You probably, A, if you clicked on this video, you probably have some inkling that you would make a salad. Um, but I think you'll find that many of the things I'm going to show you here are, 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 are tasty as well, which is great. Okay, so here we go. Let's dive in. First, there are three main ingredients I want you to think about. First is antioxidants. So remember that antioxidants are packed, and I'll go through the ones I like, are packed in foods that when we eat them, the antioxidants are like, think of them as like armor for your cells against all the free radical. Now I wanna explain, I, th I feel like antioxidants is like one of those words that just gets like thrown around a lot. Like everybody's like, yeah, antioxidant. Yeah, I should know what an, I should be eating antioxidants. But then we don't really know what an antioxidant is. So when we are living in a day-to-day, -day mod the modern world that we're in right now, What's happening is we're exposed to a lot of chemicals. We're breathing them in, we're eating them, we're touching them, they're everywhere. And those chemicals are going into our cell and they're damaging DNA. And when we look at things like cancer, when we look at chronic diseases, when we look at dementia and Alzheimer's, we look at the struggles that women have with menopause, so much of that is this damaged cellular inner parts of the cell, the working parts of the cell, but specifically the DNA. So the name of the game is to minimize toxin. But we live in a world where toxins are everywhere. Well, hopefully you all know we are living in the most toxic time in human history. So we need to not only just avoid toxins, but we need to add in more antioxidants. And what the antioxidants do is they're like a protector. I should actually make them like, like this. They, they are protecting the cell. So all of a sudden, you know, you walk through the um, department store in the makeup center where like all the phthalates with all those fake fra fragrances, you breathe them in and your cells are like, ah, I'm dying. Like the toxins are destroying the inner parts. And they do do that, by the way, if you don't believe me, do some research on phthalates and beauty products. And if those, if your cells and your body is packed with antioxidants, they're blocking out all those phthalates. They're blocking out all those toxins and they're not letting them into the cell to damage them. So the moral of that story is eat a salad before you go buy some makeup. What we wanna do is bring these antioxidants in as many different ways as we possibly can. And here's how you know something's an antioxidant. It is a bright colored fruit or vegetable. So the brighter the color, the better. And, and I've talked about this before. I don't know if I've talked about it recently, but I really like looking at eating the rainbow. I think it's such a great, simple idea, but let's bring in like when I, like one of the things I love so much is peppers. And I eat, I don't eat green peppers. I don't like those so much, but I eat the orange, I eat the yellow, I eat the red. Um, but I don't just, red are my favorite, but I don't eat the red all the time. I wanna make sure I'm getting the other colors. Same thing with things like cabbage. So there's purple cabbage, there's green cabbage. Like, can we start to think of antioxidants and protecting ourselves from these toxins by just something as simple as I am going to open up the colors of the rainbow in my food and put them in my salad. So here are some of the things that I like to put in. Red cabbage, raw red cabbage is one, purple cabbage. For those of you that have young kids, I wanna tell you a trick my mom did, and I really, really like this. Um, she would take purple cabbage and she would cut it up and put some sea salt on it. And whenever we were sitting, whether we were reading or watching TV, um, that cabbage would be our snack. And I, we loved it. We would, it's crunchy, it's kind of like a chip, um, and it has all these antioxidants in it. So uh, cabbage is amazing. And hopefully you know that when we ferment cabbage, we make sauerkraut, which is also amazing. And a lot of times in my salads, I will actually take sauerkraut and I'll just dump it into the salad. And, and it's not as sour because it gets dispersed throughout the salad. I do that when, with, when my kids are around too. And they've learned to kind of like that sour taste. So red cabbage. Second one is berries. 
Okay, this is a good one. Um, I put fruit in my salad all the time. I actually like when I'm making a salad, I like the juxtaposition of something salty and something sweet. I like something crunchy and something soft. It's a really fun way to make a salad. Salad should be fun. So berries, strawberries. I'm, I'm not a huge strawberry fan, but maybe you are. Strawberries, blackberries, blueberries. A lot of times I'll put like a uh, raspberries. I'll put like a blackberry is one of my favorite and I'll put it in there with like a feta cheese. And it's something about the juxtaposition of those two together in my mouth is like, is, is like heaven. So let's add some berries to the salad. The other one, a great antioxidant is spinach. So when I look at greens in my salad, I don't just look at one green. Like I don't just go to the store and get like, oh, mixed greens. I get arugula, I get microgreens. We have found the other day at our local farmer's market, microgreens for basil. Oh my gosh, that was so good. I put basil in, I put mint in, I put collard greens in. I bring in as many, I put chard in. I put as, I cut them all up and put them in as many of them that I possibly can in my salad. So spinach is one, you could do that. Beets are great. Golden beets, red beets. Now we're, the beets not the same, right? It's gonna have different antioxidants. One's gold, one's, one's red. So it's gonna have a different an antioxidant profile. So let's get some beets in there. It's nice, I, I like, you know what is one of my favorite, actually local restaurant got me addicted to this, is an arugula salad with red beets and grapefruit. Okay, now I've got three different levels of antioxidants that I'm filling my, my body with, protecting me from the toxins, and it tastes really good. And then the last one you could put in would be kale. Um, you know, if you don't have like small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, you do okay with kale, it doesn't make you bloated, let's put some kale in as well. Okay, so that all falls under the category of antioxidants. And there's, I'm just giving you some examples, there's a lot more. Okay, the second thing that you wanna think about when you're putting together a salad that you wanna use to help you lose weight and belly fat and keep your health up is fiber. So the more fibery a food, the healthier it is. Fiber does two things. Fiber feeds our microbiome. So you remember you have these bacteria in your gut that are making you serotonin and they're regulating your blood sugar and they're improving your immune system. So you have all this fiber in there that, that you're feeding these bacteria to make them happy. And we know fiber stabilizes blood sugar, which is amazing. That's really, so, so you're not getting that, that, those of you that follow my metabolic switching, you, when you put fiber in food, you're not getting that high blood sugar spike, which means when you fast, you're gonna get over there quicker, you're gonna get to those healing results quicker. So we love fiber. Um, now, an interesting thing, I, I pointed this out in another video, and I just wanna point it out again. A 2001 study, fairly old, found that overweight people that ate 18% less food and lost significantly more weight when they switched to a high fiber diet. So fiber, it, there's so many reasons you wanna eat fiber. Okay, check this out. I have a free fasting guide for you all. It's free and it's gonna teach you all the basics of fasting. It's gonna teach you how to kill hunger when you fast, which is really cool. And it's gonna show you how to break your fast among many other things. All you gotta do is click on this link right here and enjoy. And what's, what I find is really interesting, and I hear this from you, and I've, I've had this own, my own struggles with this, is when we're building a fasting lifestyle, our eating window is smaller. So we need to like lean in and try to find things that will help um, that really maximize our health. And a a really big salad I make almost every day using a variety of foods, thinking about antioxidants, thinking about fiber, and how many things can I get in there? Kind of like a smoothie. A lot of you use this with a smoothie where you're like, let me pour everything in here in a smoothie that I can and I'll drink it all. I do that with a salad. So some of the fibery foods that work really well in salads, and some of them are gonna surprise you. The two are, are legumes, chickpeas and lentils. So you've got high in protein, high in fiber, Tasty, lentils are really tasty. Lentils are great for hormones too, by the way. Quinoa, quinoa is super high in protein. You can make a quinoa salad. You can pour quinoa into your lettuce salad. That one's really good. We're back at the kale and the cabbage. So you got a double dipping. You're not only getting the antioxidant, but you're getting the fiber. Avocado, like my favorite food. I think every video, I pretty much talk about avocado. I'm definitely in love with avocado. So it's so good. I When I make a, a salad, I often, we have avocados out in a bowl on our, on our countertop in our kitchen. It's like the last thing, I'll make it, I'll put it all together, and then 
then I go, oh, do we have an avocado? Because I know that the avocado, if I can add as much of the avocado as possible to the salad, that I actually know it will, it will fill me up better. Whereas if it's just that, without some fat in there, I might be hungry an hour or two later. Okay, last macronutrient that you wanna put into your salad. And this one is the most filling, and it's protein. We already talked about protein, right? Talked about it on a lot of videos. I am such a fan of protein, whether you're plant-based or you are um, animal-based. Protein is the, is the breaks on hunger. It helps you build muscle and you need to be getting lots of it. So when you make a salad, can you put protein in it? The other thing about protein is that not only does it help you build muscle so you have more insulin re receptors, so you're more insulin sensitive, but it helps in repairing joints. And it's got collagen in it. It keeps your skin and your hair looking at its best. So I can't say enough about protein. Just let's just protein. Let's make sure we're doing more protein. So some of my favorite and some really unique ones, free range chicken for sure. And when I go out to eat, I'm always thinking free range chicken in my salad, grass fed steak. A lot of times, surely you've thought about this, but a lot of times, whatever we ate that night, that protein becomes the source of protein for my lunch salad at lunch. So, and a lot of times that is grass fed steak. We've got wild caught salmon. So wild caught, not farm fresh, skipjack tuna, go watch the video that I did on my no carb snacks. Skipjack tuna's in there. Um, sardines. I was just recently in Norway and um, I was staying in a home where they had left me some keto yummy keto treats and sardines was one. I decided to dive in and try it. Sardines are pretty good if you get a high quality sardine. Um, and then of course eggs. Eggs are great in a salad. Just hard boil an egg and put it in a salad is unbelievable. So use the salad, look at it like you look at a smoothie. Like you're putting all these antioxidants, fiber, and protein. Every salad, but think, antioxidants, fiber, protein. And that is what can be this healing treat that tastes so incredibly good. So here's what I need from you, cause I'm, I love salads. So I wanna learn from you. What do you put in a salad? What did I miss? Put in the, in the comments what you put in a salad. If you have a salad recipe, I'd love to see it. Um, and let's all get healthy together and more salads, please. That's the key to longevity, ending chronic disease and living in a body you love. Hope that helps. If you love this video, I did a great video called Should You Eat Eggs Every Day for Breakfast? So you need them to make things like serotonin and dopamine, the neurotransmitters that give us a good mood balance, make us happy, make us calm, give us joy and satisfaction. The precursors for those neurotransmitters are all inside this little egg.